Good morning, everyone. So today we're going to go over using Sauce Labs, Cucumber, and Selenium WebDriver to create a functional test using a boilerplate project that I've created. Uh, Sauce Labs is basically a tool that lets us test uh, things on any operating system or browser. So this is the boilerplate project I have. You can find it at Sheffer slash Sauce Cucumber Boilerplate. I'll put the link in the description of the video. But basically, first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we have Ruby set up because that's going to be our language for this. So I'm running on uh, Mac OS and I'm going to need to set up uh, RBENV for my Ruby because Ruby comes pre installed on Mac, but it's basically the system's version of Ruby. And I want to be able to run a dev version of Ruby in order to install gems and different plugins. So I'm going to start with my brew install rbenv to set up the environment. Okay, I've got the rbenv set up using 1.1.2. I'm going to go ahead and rbenv install and I want to verify uh, the version that I'm going to be using. So I need to look up the current version of Ruby that's available. And right now, the latest stable version of Ruby is 264. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that, bring it over here. I'm going to make sure that RBENV is able to find Ruby version 264. So I just want to verify that that version is available. Yep. And that's uh, October 28th version. So we'll go ahead and install that. It might take a little bit to download the tarball from the homebrew site for this. But if you're on Windows, you should be able to just install it using the Ruby installer, uh, but you might have to set up your path manually for that. Okay, so we're back. We're gonna check our Ruby version. That's the one we wanted, so we're good to go. RBNV version. Uh, we're going to want to go ahead and set the global for that. Just so that way we're not using... Uh, with RBENV, you can set basically different versions depending on uh, if you want a different shell instance, a local instance, or if you want globally to use the same version of Ruby. I'm just going to set it to globally use 264. Okay. So now I've got my global version of Ruby set to 264. Now I need to do the next steps. And that first one is gem install bundler. And bundler is kind of our tool to help us install all of our under, other dependencies. And then after bundler, we're going to run install rake as well. And there's no real order behind rake or bundler. You're going to need both of them, but neither one of them are dependent on each other. So uh, if you look at the readme for this, we're kind of going through this step by step. The next thing we're going to want to do is uh, when you log into Sauce Labs, so sign in, you'll go to your name user settings and then you'll go down to your access key and you can copy it here. You can regenerate this access key which I will do after this video is done because I don't want people using the same access key. So I'll invalidate this key once I'm done but you go ahead and put your username and your access key in. I'm just putting this in the readme so I can copy and paste it later but your username's there. That'll be the same one here. And I'm going to export these. In Windows, you can use a, you should be able to use set. But once we have that, we're going to install the dependencies using 
the gem bundler. So that'll just do a inside of this repo that we've created. I want to run a bundle install and that'll install the dependencies for this. Uh, the dependencies, if you want to look at them, are in the gem lock file or in the gem file. Uh, we've actually got a couple outdated ones in here that I'm going to go ahead and remove. Uh, Glyptic strips depends on an older version of Cucumber that we're not currently using. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And you can see the other ones we're using. Uh, these were the current versions of Cucumber and Selenium WebDriver at the time. Uh, Sauce Whisk helps us run the tests. Uh, parallel Tasks helps us run the tests in parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this dependency on Glyptic Strips since we're not really going to be using it much for this one. And I'll likely make a pull request and update that in the repo soon as well. Okay, so there's that. So we've now we're installing all of our dependencies from our gem file. Again, uh, we're using Cucumber, RSpec, Selenium WebDriver, Parallel Test, Sauce Whisk, Rake, and Water. Water is an optional web driver that I had in there at a time, but we're primarily going to be doing this using uh, Selenium. So after the bundle install, we're going to run, want to run the rake task. So I've got several different kinds of rake tasks here, and they're going to be running our default one for now, which is just going to be testing sauce. And got, right now I have it set up to run Windows 10 on H14 and OS 10 uh, X on Safari 10. There's several other ones here available as well. Uh, basically, these are just kind of pre-configured uh, ones that I had set up at the time. You can very easily change any of these to run on any other browser, browser version, or operating system version just by changing it around because uh, I just have it pulling down the platform browser name and version and setting those up. I also have it outputting a specific, ver a specific HTML and JSON file and uh, then this string will here will run, execute that command and it will also format it, give us the report, and make sure that we get, uh, if they all pass, then we'll get a single success out of that. If they don't all pass, then it'll print the failure. So to run this, simply run break test sauce. It'll kick off our tests in parallel. In this instance, we're running on one on OS X and one on Windows. Sign back in. All right, so you can see here we've got two concurrent sessions. Uh, this is, again, the free version of Sauce Labs at this time. Uh, so you have five concurrent sessions that you can run with these automated builds. We can see that these two are currently running. This one on Edge, uh, if we go drill down into it, it'll let us see what's actually running. And uh, one thing I know is that they have recently changed the functionality of the hover menu on the accounts list. So this will fail, but the point for this is to kind of get you up and running. Um, this will show us what steps look like when they uh, pass as well as what they look like when they fail. In this instance, this failed on a specific step. If we go into it, we can see over on the right hand side, it failed to send specific keys. And we can also see when it failed to do that. So you can fast forward through this and this basically takes snapshots to create the video as it goes along. They got here. Uh, they have changed the name of the continue button, so it doesn't actually go to that. It all, they have also changed the name of the create Amazon account button, so it won't go to that. But this gets us to a point where we can now 
have a jumping off point to create our own tests. Again, with the OSX version and with Edge, we can you know, fast forward through each one of those and it'll give us a timestamp over on the left to see what happened. This one, uh, we can see it was looking for that auth create account link since the behavior on that uh, menu has changed slightly. On Edge, it wasn't able to grab that and click the, the create account link. Okay, so talking with the project structure a little bit, we've got our environments here. We've got two of them set up, UK and US. This is kind of like a standard practice. If you had environmental variables, depending on your environment, you would set those there. We've got our test reports folder, our JUnits reports. These are our formatted HTML, XML, and JSON. If we were to go ahead and open this up and uh, look at the report, it's a pretty standard Cucumber report. Uh, it gives us the error that we got uh, and what line it failed on. Basically, it timed out and wasn't able to find those uh, fields. Uh, the JSON reports and XML reports are used for different reporting tools to compile those results. The example feature here uh, is, we don't have a scenario outline, but the example feature that we have, basically it is kind of setting up with a boilerplate. We're loading up our steps here. We've got several example steps. Uh, the first one here is I navigate to the blank page. We're using the page object model for this, as well as a custom page loader to load those pages based off of like an English name. If we look at our uh, different page objects here, we've got common page, uh, we've got our page loader here that basically defines our English name and what Ruby class that connects to. We've got home page, create account page, home page, uh, whenever I use in Cucumber, those words, it'll go to that Ruby file. And this is kind of how we load that specific class based off of the file name. And we're using the kernel to load that up. And we're passing in the driver for it so that way you can do the processing. If we go into the home page, we can see we've defined the elements that we would want to interact with it, uh, as well as a possible how to navigate to that page um, from, a, from the specific starting point. The sign-in link, we have our web driver and how to get to it. If we look at the sign-in page, the sign-in page also has how to navigate to it. It loads up the home page, navigates to the home page, and then clicks the sign-in link. We also have a register uh, element that we're defining there. If we look at our helpers, we have you know one helper defined right now. It basically enters a specific value of text inside of all of the fields in this. So it gathers all the elements that are visible and enters a specific text that you want. This is easy for like filling out forms if you don't really care what you're filling into them. So again, defining all of the uh, fields that we're possibly going to be using for those. If we go back over to the page here, we can look at uh, where it failed. So in the Cucumber report, it failed, uh, timed out looking for the auth create account link. And we can see on the sign in page when it clicks register is where it failed. So we're going to go to the sign in page. The register button is the create auth account link. We're going to go ahead and update that. And in this case, you know, if we were to change it, this is how we might change it to an XPath. Now, this will, instead of going to sign in, or instead of going to register, it's going to go to sign in, but this is just how you would, you know, change that underlying code to go to the place that you want. Uh, also, if we wanted to only run on one browser, you know, we might just check, uh, might only keep one of those uh, items in the array uncommented out. We can go ahead and run that again. It will start our one test. We go over to Sauce Labs again. If 
for some reason it keeps wanting me to sign in so I'm going to go ahead and refresh it'll prompt me to sign in again uh, it doesn't like you when you have more than one window open we're going to go ahead and back over to our automated tests you can see those two failures there but we're going to look at the new one it's going to enter our name here and there it uh went to go into the value and that's because you know we entered the sign in link instead of the register so it's still not there but we can see it updated our report if we go back to it refresh the report and now got a little bit further uh, but again since it wasn't actually on the register page we had to go to the sign in page it still did not have that field but you can see that the element uh, it was looking for it says it wasn't there so again this has been kind of a quick start guide on how to get started with functionally testing using web drivers sauce labs and cucumber so that concludes our video i hope everyone's enjoyed this uh, if you want to help me out go ahead and give me a like and subscribe that helps me know that you guys are enjoying these videos and i can continue to produce more also, all the links uh, for what I've been talking about will be in the description below. And again, good morning and let's go build something.